What's up dudes and dudes in the air now my name is Seth and we are back again for another trove to dove and today we're just gonna be flying solo everybody because it's been a little while and in general I've really been like I said in the past few episodes into grinding lately and I want to actually take you all on an adventure with me because I'm excited. I got some crazy, crazy RNG that I wish I would have been able to share with all of you, but unfortunately, because of the way that trove works and everything like that, like it, it was hours of grinding, yes, but I ended up getting very decent RNG that I'm very happy about, so I'll tell you about that in a minute, but hi, how y'all doing? Hope you're doing fantastic today. Hope this video makes your day even better, everybody. And if that doesn't already get you all stoked for the day, we're gonna be giving away Thanks to Master Trover, a jellyfish mount and a hot dog mount. That's very exciting. And then also, shout out to Soul Showdown because we're gonna be giving away some neon wings. Oh, that's beautiful. That is that is just absolutely amazing. Is it not? Is it not amazing? Yes, I think it is. I'm still sicky poo. I really am, it sucks. I'm the type where when I get sick, it just doesn't want to go away, like seriously. So, you can kind of see, we got, a little, we got a little bit more damage. Actually, we don't have more damage yet. Do we? No, we don't. But I'm, uh, well, spoiler alert, I am very close to, I mean, I have to try and remember to move where my cam is, uh, but I'm actually at 14, 988 power rank. We're so close to 15k PR. It's insane. Like, seriously, that RNG. So, what I ended up doing is I, I just want to make sure that we're going to avoid all these spikes as we come down here. Is I got some crazy RNG on my gems. So, first of all, I ended up getting this one, which replaced my uh, Radiant Fire gem because up until just recently, I had. I still was using a radiant fire gem and I needed to replace it So I replaced it with this one even though it's not ideal stats the stats on it are actually really really good It's got really good crit hit which is nice because I wanted to get that up there and it also has insane crit damage I mean, it's only only it's level 25 Which means that at the least it's gonna be able to go over 60 for the crit damage and Hopefully to 10% for the crit hit. I'm really hoping for that. So right now the only thing that Scythepoo can end up actually getting uh, any better than these current gems is just one that rolls the Trinity 3 of perfect stats. Because as for right now, like you see this one right here, like max health is almost always a thing, unfortunately. But look at the amount of physical damage on that one. I still, like, our class gem's okay. I need a replacement of the ra my Radiant Empowered air gem i was gonna say electric because that's yellow it just makes sense to me but yeah i need a replacement for this one uh, i need to get this one to level 20 just because of the stat increase and in general they're they're pretty good gems this one's actually ideal that's awesome uh this one's not really the best but you see the crazy amount of crit damage that this one actually has albeit not that much crit hit and health regen which by the way lots of people have been throwing out their health regen gems uh, i also really need to replace this water gem like legit but i'm just keeping it for the pr right now because i don't need that health at all and even that damage on it like we got that fire gem that's got 10k physical damage that gem that we're rocking is not very good but yeah so anyway uh devs have actually talked about it a couple times now where they're going to finally end up buffing health regen so that it's going to be a proper percentage of your health is going to be recovered faster instead of having a million health and only healing 2k a pop now depending on your health regen total uh and your health total it's gonna end up regening a lot more so if you have a million health hopefully it means that you're gonna be recovering uh at 100k health and stuff like that i think that would be really really cool if they could iron it out what am i doing i never use bombs on dungeons i should but i'm too picky with my resources and thus i never get bombs I should though, because it would make things a whole lot faster. Like seriously, every time I'm farming with Joe or Sithy Poo, they always just blast their way through everything. <coughs> oh goodness, excuse me everybody. I gotta take a little bit of a coughing break, not coffee. Oh man, alive, jeez Louise. I really hope that this goes away, but being in the coughing phase does mean, my eyes are all like teared up too. Being in the coughing, coughing phase means that it's almost done. That's what it means. Activate the stupid thing, man, so we can defeat the Batman. 
Ah, so the bad. No, I can't do that voice right now. I'm like too sick for that. Uh, by the way, too, I've actually been getting quite a few interesting challenges from all of you. We're not gonna do them today because I just want to uh, grind up a little bit of my air gem or water gem dust, which it seems like we actually got garbage for our water gem dust. We only completed like three dungeons so far. That's sad, especially in five minutes. Like we should have completed a lot more. Oh, by the way, I'll show you a quick tip if you ever run into this dungeon. You can actually laser your way through these bars right there. Yeah, so that's what I do. Usually there's a lot of quick tips that you can end up doing on different dungeons, uh, just in general, but the easiest, of course, is bomb straight down, because unless you have to climb up, Shadow One, nice. Unless you have to climb up, it's always gonna have the boss at the bottom in the basement. And also, if you're hanging out in these biomes and stuff like that, generally speaking, I'll see people just fly out into the middle of nowhere. But you see, I mean, we already explored this entire island, but dungeons only generate on islands rather than just out in the middle of the ocean like this. I mean, yes, this one did, uh, but you can kind of clearly see that it's connected to this other island right here, so the odds of a dungeon generating are a lot better. So if you're in Waterland or even in the lava world and stuff like that, I personally find it to be uh, much better to stick around, you know, to try and hang out and clear all the dungeons on an island rather than going out into the middle of nowhere and trying to actually find a new dungeon. That's just kind of what I feel about it because you're going to be completing all the dungeons anyway and if you're farming as much as you should be, then chances are you're going to end up having uh, almost, if not all of the dungeons complete inside a specific biome. So, as you can see right now, I am still not really as strong, well, not that anybody will really notice, but uh, I'm just noticing for myself personally, I'm a little bit weaker with this stellar gem, which is hilarious because the radiant gem that I had was a radiant gem. You would think that stellar would always end up being better, but that's what I was talking about. Uh, and this is a two star stellar gem too, but that's what I was talking about in my uh, gem tutorial video where the RNG on the gems is so bad that you can actually get a lower tiered gem to end up being better than a higher tier gem, but the game will consider the higher tier gem to be more powerful, thus giving more power rank, even though the gem itself is not even that good. Like, it, it really isn't. So this one that I'm rocking right now has the potential to end up being stronger, but in general, it seems like I pretty much traded my, uh, like, what my Radiant Gem ended up having was a ton of uh, physical damage. So the trade-off that we ended up doing was I'm just rocking Oh yeah, so that one's, so our ult is actually stronger, that's not bad. Uh, I was rocking a physical gem, so my physical attack got down by uh, about 3k, but it compensates because I have a lot more crit on this gem, like crit damage, and the crit hit is always nice too, like it's always really good to have more crit hit. So actually right now, I'll just show you right here, I am rocking. 60% base crit hit and 813 crit damage. Bowser, nice. I finally actually actually broke 600. That is so tight. I was waiting for that one. So yeah, uh, as you saw in that boss, or maybe you didn't catch it, normally the damage that I was doing before I swapped to this gem was 82 mil. Or no, 83 mil, 83 mil. So right now I just did 84 mil on that other boss back there. So that means that we've got 100k more damage. Yeah, 84 mil, nice. And I think there was a 30 after that. So that's like 130k. Not that I pay attention to those uh, later numbers, but either way, that's not bad. Uh, I don't know if my basic attack is any better. Like, it, it would be weird that it wouldn't be, though. So maybe my basic attacks was at uh, 710k or something like that, and now it's at 714. I don't know about my basic attack, but the fact that we're doing 60% crits is insane, like seriously. And I'm really hoping that I can end up getting myself to 15k or... Yeah, 15k VR, that would just be kind of cool. Uh, you know, not that I care about the competition and stuff, I'm actually like, what? I, I'm still top 100 for Shadowhunter, but I'm definitely, I, I think I'm just barely out of top 50. Look at this. Shadowhunter's still broken, devs. <laughs> Fix him, please. Even though, don't, don't touch him anymore, otherwise they'll end up nerfing him and then he won't be able to survive anymore. 
Because that's the thing, too, is uh, I've had a lot of other people since I've talked about this in more recent videos and stuff, and I'm really happy about that, where I've had people come up to me in-game and say how, Dude, yeah, I've been actually messing around with the Neon Ninja, and you're right, he's really, really strong. Yes, I know he is. So I'm really glad that people were actually paying attention, uh, because what ended up happening as soon as I ended up going for the Shadow Hunter is I didn't realize how much competition I made. Because almost everybody wants to main the Shadow Hunter, and uh, lots of people that don't main the Shadow Hunter, I've talked about this before, but I just want to get this rant over with before we call it for the day. Um, lots of people like to think. I mean, I guess, granted, they think about, say that with every class, but they say, like, Shadow Hunter's too overpowered! And it's like, dude, he's not really overpowered if you actually main him. Like, he's good, don't get me wrong, but it's like, our crit is doing 84 mil. That's not bad, that's really, really good. Joe has actually been leveling up his candy bar lately, and he's doing 50 mil for every time he uses his right click. That's insane. That's kind of what I was talking about and why I would argue that the Gunslinger might actually end up being stronger than the Shadow Hunter because even though you're going to be doing less damage, the fact of the matter is that you're going to be able to pull off certain attacks more often than the Shadow Hunter can do anything. Because right now, like the Shadow Hunter, our ult is nice. Don't get me wrong. It's really, really nice. But what we're really strongly relying on is our normal attack damage. And I haven't really tested out the numbers because honestly, I think that's going a bit too far uh, to find out whether or not, like how much damage we're actually doing per second, which would be kind of nice to know just compared to the other classes out of a curiosity. But in general, I don't think it's gonna make much of a difference because if you end up getting 15K uh, PR with pretty much every class in the game, you're gonna be able to handle U9 no problem, okay? And uh, Duplis, even earlier, like he was saying, how he can actually solo all the way through Ultra Spike just with his Neon Ninja. That's how powerful the Neon Ninja is, everybody. Like, seriously. So anyway, we got 14 cla uh, gems here, or boxes. So I, that's exactly why I wanted to open these on camera rather than not. Physical damage, crit damage. What about, what is this compared to my other ones? Uh, we could roll a perfect. That crit damage is not bad for its starting level, but I like my gems a lot better. This one's actually perfect rolled, which is nice. Uh, and this one's got insane crit damage, so you know what? I'm not really gonna swap that out because uh, that's the one thing that I just wanna say in closing, everybody. I know today's episode was a little bit longer is that uh, once you end up getting somewhere around 50k physical damage or magic damage or whatever, you can start kind of focusing more of your attention on crit damage because as you end up, like right now at this point, right, uh, I'm at, uh, what is it? 78k for my physical damage. I was at 81k when I ended up having my Radiant Gem but you can see that the crit damage is a much bigger multiplier than adding to more of our physical damage. Our physical damage pool is nice, yes, but the fact of the matter is that once you end up getting to this type of power, Nintendo power, uh, it ends up being more profitable to go for crit damage itself because it's a percentage of your total damage rather than just increasing your damage by like one or two. Because right now, the way that the damage works in this game is if we weren't doing crits, we would do 78k. That's how much damage you do. You do exactly how much damage it shows. That's what our basic attack is. Uh, I think this 80% is, I don't even know what that's from, honestly. But yeah, so then you just calculate it and multiply it off of the crit damage. Uh, and of course, for myself personally, I just look at what we're doing. But either way, lo that's long enough anyway. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I very much appreciate it. Don't forget to duke in the like button, share favorite, and subscribe to join Team Pixel Sign. And stay epic, everybody. Believe